Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. As always, go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, go subscribe and get your free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. Uh, we'll get you updated to new content, new podcasts that are out uh, on that email list as well. So uh, again, doesn't cost you anything but but an email uh, to get that PDF uh, sent out to you. A great little resource uh, refresher if you're out in clinical practice or if you're preparing for uh, pharmacology exams or board exams of any type. So uh, with that, let's get into the drug of the day today. And technically, it's probably not classified uh, as a drug. So today's a little bit of a special episode uh, per request. Um, I've had uh, some dietitians reach out over time, as well as some uh, pharmacy folks, medication folks too, uh, inquiring about grapefruit juice and what to do with it, how to handle it, that type of thing. And uh, while I'll say there certainly isn't one set answer on exactly what to do, uh, there are a lot of potential drug interactions um, with grapefruit juice. And I wanted to... Uh, a, kind of outline how that works and why there is drug interactions, uh, talk about grapefruit juice a little bit specifically, as, as well as, you know, kind of talking about the dose dependence of grapefruit juice. Um, also, clinical changes, alteration in intake, um, and then, of course, you know, some of the most common uh, drugs that you're going to see. And I'm not going to go through an all-inclusive list. Um, I'm going to as I typically do with drug interactions, I'm going to go through some of the most common ones uh, that you're actually going to see in clinical practice. So um, with that said, let's let's cover a little bit of the, the basics here. So grapefruit juice causes drug interactions by inhibiting CYP3A4. Now, CYP3A4 is basically an enzyme that breaks down drugs and in all honesty, it breaks down uh, a lot of drugs that we commonly use. So that's why grapefruit juice is so substantial in some of the interactions it can cause with so many meds is because it inhibits an enzyme, CYP3A4, uh, that really is the pathway uh, for breakdown of a lot of different drugs or the primary pathway for breakdown of a lot of different drugs. So ultimately, by grapefruit juice inhibiting this enzyme or blocking it, what's going to happen is drugs that are broken down by this enzyme aren't going to get broken down as quickly. And so concentrations can rise, which ultimately leads to an increased risk of side effects and toxicity. So that's how it, how it all works and why grapefruit juice interacts with things. Um, but I do want to, you know, talk about some some clinical caveats. So um, let's let's say we've got a patient stabilized, for example, and your patient picks up a new diet. Uh, they're making a change. Somebody said, oh, grapefruit juice has made me feel so much better. And now all of a sudden they're taking a bunch of grapefruit juice. Okay. So that's all well and good, but it's going to interact potentially with, with medications and concentrations are going to go up. Now let's say that same patient uh, comes in, they do two or three glasses of grapefruit juice a day, and all of a sudden you tell them, hey, 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 stop, stop taking that grapefruit juice. It's going to interact with your medications. Well, if it's a, a sensitive medication to uh, concentrations and maybe we've stabilized the patient with those concentrations, now all of a sudden taking away grapefruit juice will make those concentrations fall. So depending upon what's going on, you may have to alter dosages or you may see clinical changes in that patient because they aren't getting uh, as much drug as they used to when they were consistently taking uh, the grapefruit juice. So um, just really, really important that you, if you are going to recommend a patient stop taking grapefruit juice, that is, um, that it could... Um, cause drug concentrations to fall for certain medications that obviously interact with grapefruit juice. So again, um, any type of, of changes and alterations in intake 
um, can cause this fluctuation uh, in drugs that interact via the CYP uh, 3A4 pathway there. So really, really important to think about that. Um, and as I get into medications, probably one of the most uh, important ones that we want to think about that alteration is a uh, drug like cyclosporin or tacrolimus. Now, these medications are immunosuppressants, often used in transplant patients, um, used to prevent uh, rejection of a transplant. So it is very, very critical that we keep drug concentrations stable. Okay, and so alterations, whether we stop taking grapefruit juice or start taking it, um, alterations in that intake could significantly change drug concentrations, and that might lead the patient to a really bad outcome in toxicity if we started grapefruit juice, if we take grapefruit juice away or make significant changes in intake. Uh, that could potentially lead to um, rejection of the uh, transplant. So again, really, really important to get a handle on if your patient uses grapefruit juice, um, how much are they, they using, what their pattern is, that type of thing. Uh, if they don't use grapefruit juice and everything is stabilized, um, that's a, a good patient to educate them to say, hey, don't use any grapefruit juice. So and there's a lot of drugs that absolutely, you know, recommend no grapefruit juice and, and it's contraindicated, that type of thing. Um, but again, it, when you first meet with a patient, it's definitely important to get that um, intake down so you kind of know what you're dealing with if you do recommend to stop or make changes that way. Okay, so that's uh, just kind of a, a little bit of a background um, with, you know, that example of the immunosuppressant, which could be really, really sensitive uh, to concentration changes and the risk and, and benefit of going uh, higher and lower uh, with those, those concentrations. So um, other medications, let's talk about some of them. So amiodarone, uh, cardiac medication, antiarrhythmic, obviously a, a pretty significant medication if somebody is using this med and one that we really wouldn't want to flux uh, concentrations of. So uh, that's a, an important one, I think, to, to pay attention to. Uh, reports of uh, an increase of, of AUC of, up to uh, 50%, so that's area under the curve. So basically um, analogous in a way to, to drug concentrations or a way to show drug concentrations uh, is that AUC calculation. Um, uh, but keep in mind, it's, it's always dose dependent. You know, I mean, it depends upon how much grapefruit juice uh, that we're talking about. If you've got a patient that's starting to do, uh, goes from zero to three glasses a day, um, that's that's a much, much bigger deal than a patient who's maybe doing an ounce or two, just kind of a little bit of a taste. So again, important to assess that with patients. Uh, another medication, budesonide. Uh, so this is a corticosteroid. Most often I see it used in inflammatory bowel diseases um, like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Um, definitely concentrations can go up with adding grapefruit juice. So obviously we got to keep an eye out for, uh, you know, elevations in blood sugar, um, maybe worsening insomnia, things like that, um, that can be indicative of potential, um, acute signs of uh, signs and symptoms of, of elevated steroid concentrations. Uh, colchazine, uh, used in the management of gout concentrations can be increased there by adding grapefruit juice. Uh, lorazidone, I don't see it incredibly often, but it's, a, it's an antipsychotic. Um, drug concentrations uh, could be uh, raised there, and obviously along with it, a lot of the antipsychotic um, adverse effects, which I've uh, certainly talked about in, in previous podcasts. Uh, statins. I mean, statins is probably uh, the most common one you're, you're going to run into. Um, simvastatin, atorvastatin. Both of these drugs can have their concentrations increased. So if I find out a patient has started taking grapefruit juice uh, and they're on a statin, probably the first thing I'm, I'm going to ask or inquire about is adverse effects from the statin and probably, you know, myopathy. Are yeah, they having any muscle pain, muscle soreness, that type of thing? Um, and then cyclosporin, tacrolimus, I mentioned 
those those two as well. Again, that's definitely uh, I would put that up there with amiodarone, where we really don't want to change uh, those drug concentrations too much. We we really really need to emphasize stability there um, because obviously increased concentrations we run that risk of of toxicities and lower concentrations we we run the risk of, of bad things happening like uh, a rejection for example uh, in the case of a, of a transplant so those are some of the the main uh, drugs i think about um kind of when i when i hear of grapefruit juice or if i happen to run into a patient that does it um, those are some of the first few that that i think of um I do have a, a few others I, I want to mention because I do think about the patient's diagnoses as well. Um, just understanding that if a patient has a certain diagnosis, they're likely going to be on a certain regimen of medication that may interact with grapefruit juice. So um, I think about cardiovascular disease and hypertension so and cardiac issues. Uh, so like I mentioned with the amiodarone, uh, if they've got uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, elevated cholesterol, they're going to be using a statin likely, and grapefruit juice is going to interact there. So any type of heart cardiac issues, I'm definitely um, uh, concerned about grapefruit juice causing causing some interactions. Um, some ones I didn't mention uh, previously are some of the calcium channel blockers too. Uh, so your uh, diltiazem, verapamil, uh, amlodipine, another one that can potentially interact with grapefruit juice there. Um, certainly things to, to think about. Uh, any patient taking immunosuppressive therapy, uh, so a transplant patient, for example, um, those meds, cyclosporin to chrolimus, I, I went through them before, but if I see that diagnosis that somebody's had a transplant, um, I'm definitely much more concerned about the use of, of grapefruit juice and trying to uh, prevent that interaction from causing uh, variations in uh, drug concentrations. Uh, anxiety, uh, pain. So some of the benzodiazepines, uh, triazolam, diazepam, uh, they can be impacted uh, by grapefruit juice's action on CYP3A4, causing increased concentrations. Uh, an opioid like uh, fentanyl, for example, um, also an anti-anxiety medication like buspirone. So anxiety and pain are kind of another couple of uh, diagnoses I think about um, where grapefruit juice could potentially impact some of the meds that we might use to uh, manage these conditions. And it may be short-term uh, or long-term there. And then other uh, potential, besides anxiety, other potential psych issues, there um, are more antipsychotics uh, that can have um, maybe mild to moderate interactions with grapefruit juice. Uh, there are some uh, less common probably antidepressants um, that can interact with grapefruit juice and concentrations could go up. Um, so those are a, a few disease states um, that, that I kind of think about. Um, in addition to uh, gout as well, I wanted to mention, of course, because um, I mentioned uh, colchicine previously. So I hope that gives you a little bit of background on grapefruit juice and a little bit of education and uh, gives you kind of some strategies um, and things to think about when you approach a patient regarding this drug interaction, because I know I've been asked about the interaction uh, in practice because patients, they read the uh, pamphlet, for example, and it says absolutely do not use grapefruit juice, um, and they really want to. So, you know, working with patients, um, you know, changing drugs that don't interact with grapefruit juice um, might be a potential option if, you know, that's a, a deal breaker for a patient because they absolutely want to use grapefruit juice. Um, so hopefully I've kind of given you some, some strategies, some things to think about um, in monitoring for the risk of uh, grapefruit juice and its potential uh, to cause drug interactions. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode today, a little different um, from kind of the, the traditional episodes that I've, I've done previously. Uh, obviously, I, I covered a lot of drugs that interact with grapefruit juice, and I've done a lot of them already in previous uh, podcasts where I, I discuss drug interactions, adverse effects, 
uh, and all sorts of other uh, pharmacology nuggets there for you. So uh, if you enjoyed this uh, podcast, leave a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Uh, if you um, want to support this podcast, go to meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. Uh, if you're a pharmacist, we've got board certification study materials there. Uh, if you're a med student, PA, nurse, um, whoever looking for more medication education uh, and kind of those real-world uh, clinical per- practice pearls and, and real-world application, uh, I've got books on Amazon, books on Audible. Um, and again, all those can be found at meded101.com slash store. And your support there certainly helps uh, grow this podcast and keep it free and available uh, for all to benefit from. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off for today. Uh, track me down on LinkedIn, uh, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCGP, BCPS, or uh, Gmail, mededucation101 at gmail.com. Uh, feel free to leave comments, suggestions. I do uh, what I can uh, to kind of read every email uh, that I get, and I honestly try to respond uh, to everyone that I, I get as well. Sometimes it may, it may take me a few days, uh, but I do try to get to uh, all emails certainly that are, are sent to me there. So uh, with that said, uh, take care. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.